Have you ever seen those insane Minecraft videos and wondered, why doesn't my game look like that? Vanilla Minecraft gets boring fast, but with mods you can make it run faster, look better, and even turn it into a completely different game. Alright, before you download anything sketchy, here is how to do it safely. This is because installing mods is tricky, and you don't want a virus from definitelynotavirus.com. Modrinth and CurseForge, links up on screen, are good and reliable options. They are easy and safe to use with lots of rarely reliable downloads. I'll show you exactly how to use both of these sites, and there are other websites that do have Minecraft mods, but these are a bit more sketchy, so you should only really use these if you're careful. Now, similar to operating systems, there are three main mod loaders. These are what actually run the mods. They are called Fabric, Forge, and NeoForge. These are similar, but some mods are exclusive to only one or two of them, with Fabric being my favorite because it has the most mod support. Now we need to be able to actually use these mods, so let's go over how to install each of these mod loaders. And even more similar to operating systems, each of the three main mod loaders has the same base function, and I'll show you how to download and install each of them. Now this is going to sound pretty technical, but as long as you don't overthink it, you'll be fine. So let's start with Fabric API. This is one of my favorites because it probably has the biggest mod support as I previously said. So you're wanna, gonna go to the website fabricmc.net is linked on screen and in the description. It's pretty simple, you just go to the website and install the downloader. Once in the downloader, you wanna install the version you want, then you click install, it'll do its thing, then you open up the Minecraft launcher, then in the like middle left here, you'll see the version. Now if you click this, you should see a little fabric thing and it will have the version that you installed. If it doesn't, you can try again or watch a more in-depth tutorial to troubleshoot. Now let's go over how to install the other launchers. Let's start with NeoForge. NeoForge is pretty straightforward as it is just neoforged.net. You select your version from the website. Click it, click there to download the installer on the click here to download installer button, download the installer, run it, and then you should have your very own profile for NeoForge. And lastly, we just have normal Forge. Now this one's kind of like NeoForge, except it just has more ads. You download the installer, wait for five seconds for the ad to pass, then you skip the ad and then it starts downloading the installer for you. This is kind of annoying because the other two really don't have ads, or at least don't make you wait to see an ad. Then you download the installer, once you've downloaded that, it's just like NeoForge, you open it up and install it. Now that you actually have the loaders, you're going to want to install some mods. So first up, you want to just launch the loader with no mods, and then close it again, so you're going to want to go into the Minecraft launcher i am using fabric here then you're going to want to launch the game once the game launches you're just going to want to close it again and then you want to hit windows r if you are on windows i don't know what to do if you're on mac then type percent app data percent and then you want to look for a file folder labeled dot minecraft now you want to go into this folder and inside this folder you should see another folder called mods and here is where you get to put all of the mods that you want. Now the disadvantage to this is you're going to have to swap out your loader and everything if you want to use a different set of mods for a different version but there is a way to fix this I will look it over in the rest of the video. Now that you have your mod loader, now you need the mods. So there are two main places to get mods, Modrinth and CurseForge. Modrinth is more of a modern and recent addition to the modding community, and CurseForge is one of the OGs. So let's start with CurseForge. So this is the website CurseForge. The link is, again, up on screen. And as you can see for each mod in Minecraft, you can see the version and loader for the mod. And then once you click into the mod, I will just do this one here. As you can see under files, I can see the loader and version this specific file is for. So I'm just going to find the version and loader I want and then download that one. Then you'll be taken to this page, wait a couple seconds and it should start downloading. If it doesn't, 
There is a retry button. I'll show it right there. Look, it, there's a big arrow going to it. You should really be able to see it now. Now let's go on to Modern. Modern is awfully similar to Course Forge. As you can see, it is essentially just the same. It's more of a bubble interface. And as you can see, you can see like the loaders for a mod. And if you click into the mod, you can see the compatible versions and even the supported environments, which is cool to see if it is a server side only or client side only. Here's a cool FYI. If you are in a single player world, server side mods still work. So a server side mod treats your computer as a server if you're playing single player, which is an interesting tip. And yeah, that's modern. Now let's go on to some other websites which are less reliable and which I would not recommend. So the most prominent of these websites is called Nine Minecraft. And there's actually a really good paragraph you can read at stopmodreposts.org. And summarizes essentially says that reposted mods th pose a threat to you because there's a good chance there's some sort of virus, even if it is a Trojan horse or subtle inside of it. And also, it's not giving any like revenue at all to the creators. And as you can see, I blurred them, but this site has a lot of ads on it. Like, holy cow, this is a lot of ads. Also, this site just feels funky and it even feels sketch show. If you really, really need to, I would use a site, but I'd use virustotal.com to scan the file first. And if possible, I would just really avoid it altogether. Alright, so now you've got your mods, you may have noticed that both the size Modern and Curse Forge did a lot of advertising for their apps, especially Curse Forge, it's actually kind of annoying. So their apps are actually pretty useful, so let's go with the Modern app first. So it's a really good app in my opinion, it's pretty easy to use and very sleek, so it's pretty easy. Just using the little plus button you can create a new instance. And then you can choose your different loader. They have Fabric Forge, Neo Forge, and Quilt. I didn't talk about Quilt because it's less known. You can select your game version. And then once you're in, you can go to the thing. Click install content. And depending on what you do, you can install any of the content. And it'll automatically install all the compatible versions. Or a compatible version with your thing. And like let's say you need Sodium, which means Fabric API. When you download Sodium, it will download Fabric API for you which is super duper helpful. Now, the loader of Cursed Forge, in my opinion, is not quite as seamless, but it does the same-ish thing, and in my opinion, works just as well. And these both have a lot of mod packs on them, so you can go into the mods packs and then like search up something like, I don't know, all the items. That's actually a really popular one, all the mods. That is a popular mod pack on Curse Forge, and it is exactly what it sounds like. It is just a bunch of mods. It's actually pretty fun. I've played it a couple times, and yeah, these are the loaders. I wouldn't actually recommend just trying to stay on the default Minecraft launcher. It kind of sucks compared to these two. But if you're using Forge more, I guess go with the Curse Forge launcher. If you're using Fabric more, go with the Modern launcher. The Modern launcher, in my opinion, is more sleek and modern, so I prefer it. So now that you have launchers and the way to get mods, what mods should you actually use? I'll go over some cool mods, some interesting mods, and some mods I think you should just have, whether you're playing with a lot of mods or just one or two. Alright, so our fun mod is called the Physics Mod. It's one of the most famous Minecraft mods, and it's really cool. As you can see, we have Smoke Physics and Fabric Physics, which is exceptionally cool. We also have the Fabric Physics on my cape and Snow Physics, so when I tread on snow, it actually makes a hole in it. And then my favorite thing over there, you can probably see with that fountain, is that this has full on liquid physics, which is crazy. Obviously the oceans and lakes aren't made of this because holy cow, that would be really laggy. They're just made of waves, but the liquid physics in this mod's insane. Also it has special block breaking physics, as you can see with this TNT. The blocks will shatter into fragments when they get exploded, as you can see there. And then there's also like projectile physics with these snowballs, as you can see. And then I can blow them up with TNT to make them go flying, as you can also see here. Kaboom. Uh, there we go. And <laughs> a little bit of lag, but the snowballs go flying and it's really cool. Now let's move on to the next mod. The next one is called Voxy, and after seeing this, you may not understand why it's the most necessary one, and it's because this one does have some bugs and some downsides. For example, it's not compatible with all shaders, 
just a couple of them, but the fact that you can zoom in and see the one-to-one -one scale block for anything on any part of the map is actually kind of crazy. So as you can see, I can go to that Woodland Mansion, zoom in on it, and then if I fly to it in spectator mode, here let me just speed this up, I can get there and as you can see it's probably about 5,000 blocks away and I'm at the Woodland Mansion. As you can see it's exactly how it looked when I zoomed in which is super cool and this mod in my opinion you really like it. Now all the Distant Horizons fans are going to be mad at me for this but I think it's way better than Distant Horizons. Now this last one might seem a bit a little bit weird because it's Zoomify. It's a Minecraft Zoom mod. Why on earth would that be in this video? And that's because I just find myself using it all the time. I zoom in on stuff like that tree over there. What's that tree doing? Should I be worried about it? Is it planning to destroy my base? Or it works even better without shaders like, ooh, there's a ruined portal over there. There's this stuff from the physics mod segment. And what's that cow up to? Now let's say you're trying to install your own mods and you get some crash messages. So let's go over how to fix some of the common ones. So the first one is, this mod is incompatible and needs this version of Minecraft. This one's pretty straightforward. It will say the name of the mod that's incompatible and what version of Minecraft it requires. This means that you downloaded the wrong version of the mod and you just need to go re-download the mod so it has the right version. This is a pretty simple fix. Now, after you do that, you might see this mod needs this version of this mod, but it is present or missing. And this means that, let's say, this mod needs Fabric API 1.21.10.2, and you have 1.21.10.1. That will cause this error, because the mods technically aren't compatible, but you have the wrong version of the mod. This is also a pretty simple fix, you just gotta install the right version of the mod and you should be fine now there are some other messages and i'm not going to go into them you can find dedicated tutorials to them on youtube and that's all i have for you guys if you guys enjoyed please subscribe as it really does me help me out and thanks for watching to the end also as you can see now if you're a channel member you get your name at the end so that's cool also same with patreon